case. Joining me today is District Attorney Deb Ryan, Chief County Detective David Sasa, Rob Clark from the U.S. Marshal's Office, ASAC Jamie Milligan, FBI Philadelphia, Commander Andrew Regan, U.S. Border Patrol, and Director Bill Messerschmidt, Chester County Emergency Management. There have been a significant number of developments in this investigation over the past 24 hours. Earlier this morning, at approximately 12.30 a.m., PSP was made aware of a sighting of Cavalcante in the East Pikeland area of Chester County. Our investigation yielded the following occurrences. Sometime during the evening of September 9th, Cavalcante stole a 2020 Ford Transit van from an area approximately three quarters of a mile from the perimeter we were maintaining near the Longwood Gardens property. The keys had been left in the van and the theft was not noticed until PSP canvassed the area looking for a possible stolen vehicle after a report of a sighting of Cavalcante in the East Pikeland area. It was determined Cavalcante used the van and traveled to that area. At 9.52 p.m., he attempted to contact an individual he had known and worked with several years prior. Cavalcante spoke with the individual via a video doorbell at that residence and inquired about meeting with that individual. The individual was at dinner with his family and did not respond to meet Cavalcante. Cavalcante left that residence. The homeowner eventually returned home, reviewed his doorbell recording, and called local police. PSP received a call about this sighting and the next at 12.30 in the morning on September 10th, 2023. This was our first indication that Cavalcante had been able to travel from the area of Longwood Gardens. Photos of Cavalcante were downloaded from a video doorbell and have already been provided to the media. And some of those photos are here uh, adjacent to the podium. You will note that Cavalcante is now clean shaven and wearing a bright green hooded sweatshirt. Investigators were also made aware of another sighting in the Phoenixville area in which Cavalcante appeared at the residence of another old work associate at 10.07 p.m. That associate was not home, but a female resident observed Cavalcante and called her friend. That friend responded to the residence and eventually placed a call to local police. Police investigated and then notified PSP. During that investigation, there was an indication of a white vehicle possibly being used by Cavalcante. An updated photo of Cavalcante was provided to state, state and local law enforcement at 2.30 a.m. Using the description provided, at 5.20 a.m., investigators identified a vehicle from the Longwood Gardens area which fit the description of the vehicle operated by Cavalcante. Upon contacting the vehicle owner, the owner realized their vehicle had been stolen. Further investigation revealed the keys had been left in the vehicle. Law enforcement nationwide was immediately notified of the theft and an alert was provided to state and local law enforcement at 5.37 a.m. After an extensive search, the vehicle was discovered abandoned in a field behind a barn in East Nantmeal Township at 10.40 a.m. Investigators have been searching the area around that location since that time. We are obviously very concerned that Cavalcante has or will attempt to steal another vehicle to facilitate his escape. As a reminder, we ask for the public's help by familiarizing themselves with the updated photographs and description of Cavalcante, to check security cameras they have, and to call us immediately if they believe they may have seen him. Again, we ask residents to please secure homes, outbuildings, and vehicles. This most recent incident is a reminder that he will take advantage of any opportunity to obtain items he needs. It is also imperative that anyone with information about Cavalcante contact us immediately so we can act on it in a timely manner. I have told you from the start of this manhunt that we were conducting a multifaceted investigation which includes strong investigative and technological components. Those aspects become even more important now. We will aggressively continue this investigation with our federal, state, county, and local partners until we successfully bring Cavalcante back into custody. Cavalcante is considered extremely dangerous, and there is a reward of up to $20,000 offered for information leading to his capture. 
Anyone with information is asked to call our tip line at 717-562-2987. 717-562-2987. I know this is an extremely stressful time for the community. I assure you we are doing everything possible to bring this to a successful resolution as quickly as possible. I also want to make mention uh, of a, a special thank you to uh, Longwood Gardens. I will tell you that uh, for some time, the past several days, uh, we, have, uh, we have had to essentially take over that property and they have been very, very accommodating and I appreciate that. Uh, uh, you know, not everyone and uh, not every uh, business or organization would be as accommodating, and so I thank them. And with that, I will be happy, and as will the others here, to take any questions that you may have. Yeah, Jennifer, how did you allow this to happen? I mean, he was, you had 400 officers within this perimeter. You had it closed down to a four square miles, square miles I understand it, yet he somehow slips through this perimeter and then is spotted in Phoenixville. How do you explain that? Well, what I would tell you is that, uh, as I've said from the very beginning, there are a number of challenges in any investigation. No perimeter is 100% secure, ever. We did a very good job, and I will tell you, I applaud the men and women who were out there standing in some very difficult conditions and trying to secure that perimeter. Uh, I'm not gonna make an excuse to you. Uh, I wish it had not happened. Unfortunately, there are a lot of circumstances, there are a lot of issues uh, associated with that property. Tunnels, very large drainage ditches, things that could not be secured, you couple that with weather, aviation being down for a night. There are a number of reasons. Again, no excuses. We, uh, we took on the responsibility. We gave it a very good effort. We gave it an exceptionally good effort, and I applaud the men and women who have done, uh, done another job. Is there a reason to believe I, there were underground tunnels? There are the underground room? tunnels there. Do you provide a blueprints along with gardens? Was that... Did the management there facilitate you with that aspect? They did help us with blueprints, and as a matter of fact, there's additional construction that also has uh, other tunnels and uh, drainage areas that are under construction. Those cannot be secured. It's, it's really that simple. So um, you do the best you can with any given circumstance. It's no different when it's a wooded search. It's no different when it, there are challenges with every one of them. Uh, and so we do the very best that we can our people did a great job, and uh, and I applaud them. Uh, I wish that it had not uh, that he had not been able to slip through there, but uh, but that does happen sometimes, and that's why we don't simply rest on uh, on our laurels and say, okay, we're going to take one approach. I will tell you, I mean, to give you some idea, I, I I brought you all in here on Friday and and showed you the scope of this. I nearly doubled the planning uh, for seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Our plan had been to go close to 600 uh, members of law enforcement to do one massive sweep of that entire uh, piece of property. There's a huge amount of planning goes into that and working around weather and some of those other kinds of things. So it is not for a lack of trying that this occurred. We'll fall back as we do in any other investigation when something doesn't go our way, we'll fall back to something else. In the end, I am confident we will capture him and we will bring him back in into the uh, criminal justice system. So you believe that Calvin Hunter? I'm sorry, right sir. Now, hearing that his sister was arrested. Can you hear me focus now? Where is it? Uh, currently, uh, we're up uh, in a little more in northern part of uh, of the county. I do not have a perimeter secured up there. We're searching an area around where we recovered uh, the van, but uh, there are a number of other uh, a number of other pieces of information that are in play that don't require a perimeter and uh, and and are the focus of our efforts at this point. Let's talk about Dave's family's involvement at this point. His mom was assisting you earlier, but we're not hearing that his sister's been arrested by ICE and possibly for deportation. Uh, that is accurate. And do you believe that he's family getting cooperating? Um, do you believe that he's getting any assistance from those family members or anyone else in this community? Uh, as as always, I'm not going to comment on what assistance uh, he may or may not be receiving but we take steps to try and minimize or eliminate that, uh, that assistance, and that's exactly what we've done at this What's point. What's the focal point of the search right now? Uh, the, the physical search right now is near that, uh, the recovery of that van, but again, there are a number of other things in play that, uh, that don't require that physical presence up there, and, uh, and those are all equally or even more important uh, at this point. Do you still believe point. he is in Pennsylvania and, and probably Chester County? Um, have other special forces come in over the last few hours to support your efforts from other states? 
And then anything you tell us about the victim's family right now? I do believe that he's still in Pennsylvania. I can tell you that the victim's family uh, remains under protection, and uh, we assure them that they will be fully protected through all of this. Uh, and I'm sorry, what was the uh, other part other of your question? additional uh, support coming in from other states? So yes, as, as always, uh, we adjust. You know, I just mentioned the planning that uh, had, uh, obviously I couldn't disclose to you ahead of time, but the planning that was going into tomorrow's efforts. We were bringing even more resources in. Uh, what we're doing now is shifting, again, based on the nature of uh, how I see the investigation playing out and going forward. Uh, all of our partners here are doing an, an amazing job of, of shifting now and, and bringing the resources we need to bear. Yes, sir. Can you repeat the location of where that van was located, just so we make sure we have that right? And also, this video, that, or these images that you're sharing with us, what has the person who shared these images told you about? What he's saying through this ring camera? What is he asking for? Does this tell you that he's now trying to get support from associates? So the first part of your question, East Nantmeal Township in Chester County. The second part, I'm not going to be specific, but Yes, he is absolutely, I'll, I'll give it a general characterization, he is absolutely looking for support. He needs that support. He doesn't have it. What level? Yes, ma'am. How did he get from Longwood Gardens over to Bailey's Farm and nobody saw him? It was police car all along Falling Hill, Northbrook, the last few days. Like, how come nobody saw him? How did he get there? Well, ma'am, uh, first of all, you've got darkness, you've got a variety of weather conditions, and you've got some fairly rugged terrain, um, and I mentioned you know, drainage ditches, underground tunnels, all of those kinds of things. There are a lot of factors. Until I capture him and, or we capture him and, and, and I or others have an opportunity to uh, uh, interview, and if he would share that, I guess then we'll know. But until then, uh, I, I, I don't know how he got over there. I wish I did. I could speculate on, uh, on a couple of possibilities. But, uh, but I can tell you that, again, no perimeter is 100% secure. We do the best we can most times we're able to secure it adequately. For clarification, these images from the uh, doorbell camera, they were from his acquaintance's home? These were from, yes, it was, uh, 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 when I say an acquaintance, it was someone he had worked with several years ago. Uh, I'm not suggesting that they have a relationship okay. with him now. It was someone that he has worked with, but he sought out uh, uh, their assistance. Is What's your location that, you know, you might have a weapon or anything? Is there anything from that? I don't have any substantive proof right now that he has a weapon, but uh, clearly he has been in residences, businesses, uh, and, and in vehicles, at least one, uh, that uh, I can't say what may or may not have been in any of those locations that he had access to. How much does this cost so far? How much more do you all need? Uh, I got to tell you, I'm not tracking the, the cost right now. We're doing what it takes to. Uh, uh, to successfully run this investigation uh, in terms of what we need. Uh, I will tell you that our partners have been amazing. Anything that I've asked for, uh, anything that they have suggested, because there's a lot of expertise standing behind me and in the, in the room over here, uh, anything that uh, has been reasonably suggested by any of us, each of us steps up and, uh, and accommodates with those resources. Well, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I've suggested all along that there are a number of investigative and technological uh, pieces that can be brought to bear. Uh, that is where this shifts until such time as we have him in a position where we're prepared to try and contain and, and capture him again. Are you yes, ma'am. Just, just one point? minute, sir. Are you aware of any vigilante type people who are trying to help you guys or assist Yes, I have heard so that that's the case. How do you reconcile what the professionals are doing with what the amateurs are doing? Are they helping you in any way or not at all? They're not helping us at all, and in fact, they become a hindrance. Again, some of the technology, some of, the, some of our resources have to be uh, diverted at times when they insert themselves into a scene. It's not helpful. Uh, I wish they wouldn't do it. I've asked that they, they not, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't stop them in some cases from doing it. Again, are, you yes. to this, sorry, are you prepared to characterize this as a nationwide man now that he's broken the perimeter, had access to a vehicle, could potentially leave the state? We have always uh, looked at the potential that it could be a nationwide manhunt. The resources that are standing here with me 
already make it a nationwide manhunt. The information is being shared as appropriate across the country. This morning, uh, before, uh, before we even had a, a full picture, the information we had was being shared with appropriate law enforcement all across the country. And so we keep our law enforcement uh, partners apprised of the, the progress and or the setbacks for that matter. And, uh, you know, and, and we work with them as necessary. So certainly going forward, any information that we think is uh, appropriate or could even potentially be utilized by partners will be shared. And the agencies represented here uh, are in a position to do that. No, I don't think anyone underestimated him. I think, uh, you know, everyone knows that, uh, you know, he is somebody that comes from a background where he has endured some hardship, and there's no doubt he is willing to endure some hardship now. His choice is to go to prison for the rest of his life. He chooses not to do that. Unfortunately, that is not the, uh, the, what's going to prevail in the long run. Um, and so um, he is very determined. We are even more determined. Um, he will be held to justice, and, and we're going to bring him back into custody. Two quick questions. Do we know where he got the hoodie and presumably the razor to shave? Was this at the dairy farm or another break -in? The hoodie was at the, uh, at the dairy farm. I don't know about the razor. And then the second question is, we know that in 2021, uh, some people in Phoenix Bill helped him as he was trying to escape. Um, is the gentleman that he tried to reach out to one of those people? I am aware of that information, and I don't want to comment any further on that right now. Yes, ma'am. So, August 22nd, on or about, is when he was convicted, um, and he might have had some contact with people. Is there any chance upon that conviction and the people he was talking with that he hatched this plan to escape and get on a certain day? I mean, it looked like he had a little help in the prison again. Now he had that watch, watchdog guy there. But is there any thought that he started this whole thing? I don't know that there's a way to tell that it was that specific day. Do I think he has been trying to plot this? Yes. Do I think he took advantage of an opportunity that presented itself that other inmates told him about uh, from, from a different inmate uh, uh, escaping that way? Yes, I think he took advantage of that opportunity. What's but he has any number of opportunities from the time he is convicted or even prior to have contact with his attorney, with family members, and so forth. Uh, and so at any point along the way, the plot could be hatched or the plot could be con uh, continued as, as it goes on. At this point, I am not in a position to say that on a specific day, that's where it was hatched. What's your, yes, ma'am. What's your message to those in the community who may be trying to assist him in this? And what kind of charges could they face? Uh, they will be prosecuted vigorously if we can prove that they uh, assisted him. And the types of charges depends on the type of assistance. But uh, we have the district attorney here, and uh, I don't want to speak for her, but I'm, I'm certain that uh, she is well prepared to prosecute anyone who assists in any way. Uh, yes, sir. Do we know anything about where he worked in Chester County um, prior to the murder in 2021? He seems to know the area pretty well. And also, um, President Biden's sister lives in Kennett Township, where Secret Service called in at all. Uh, first, yes, we do have a lot of information on his background, and all of that factors into the overall investigation. Secret Service would be uh, one of many federal partners that has access to information, and certainly anything that, uh, that might pertain, not only to anybody that lives here, but visits or, or so forth, um, they would have full access to anything and that they needed. Was it mushroom farms or equestrian farms where he worked? Uh, I, I'm not going to go into all of his background, but, but we have looked into that. Yes, What's sir. your level of confidence that you have an idea of where he is right now? If I knew where he was right now, yeah. we would go catch him and, and bring him back in. Right. Right. What I'm telling you is that I'm confident that we will identify where he is. He slipped that perimeter. He got out. We found the vehicle. We found where he abandoned it fairly quickly. Uh, I am confident that we will continue aggressively uh, proceeding on this uh, search and this investigation, and we will eventually capture him. I'm not prepared to say that will be today or tomorrow. I don't know, but we, I, I hope sooner rather than later. You have the resources out right now where you found it. Is Absolutely. Is there any confidence that he's in that area? Or We're that still area? searching. Uh, 
we'll, we'll do a thorough search and try and uh, either capture him or eliminate that as a, Just as a possibility. Just learned the last few hours, what did you find inside the van and what, uh, why do you believe he may have ditched that there? Uh, I don't have a complete uh, uh, counting of everything that was in the van yet. Uh, quite frankly, I've been uh, busy with a number of other things, but I've got some very talented people that are working on that. Some of the folks back here have been directly involved in, uh, in, in those operations. What I would, uh, what I would tell you is that um, you know, we take all of that information and factor that in as, as we go forward. I, th I, I would also tell you that one of the reasons that I believe he dumped that vehicle was uh, a lack of fuel. I do not have a report of a stolen vehicle. I anticipate that we will. Are we still at 400 people searching on the ground, or are, are we up in the numbers as of right now, looking for him? Uh, we're adjusting the numbers uh, as we speak, and again, it's it's really it's going to be determined by uh, by what the conditions require. I, I, there is no point in having resources stand around. Conversely. I never want to be in a position where I wish I had more and didn't have them here. So we try and anticipate and, and we'll adjust to, to the you needs. You you're still investigating how he was able to breach that perimeter, but have you been able to pinpoint where in the perimeter that he was able to slip through or general consensus of the, the area? I have not been able to conclusively determine that. I have my suspicions where I believe or how I believe that happened. Did you share that? But uh, no, but uh, no, because I don't know conclusively. But um, Again, uh, I, I knew where the weaknesses were, and I think perhaps one of those weaknesses uh, came into play here. Senator Colonel, at what point does another agency take over if he is, in fact, spotted across state lines? Uh, at that point, um, we, we certainly have all the federal partners here right now. The U.S. Marshals uh, really takes the lead any time you start crossing state lines, and they're here. They're uh, a huge partner in all of this. Uh, uh, we work hand-in-hand. Not only when we're doing these kinds of investigations, we have people assigned to their offices that are deputized uh, right along with, uh, with their, their deputy marshals and that work with them every day of the year. So this will be seamless if it ever does transition across the state line. Right now, there's no indication that that's the case. Um, but if it does, it won't change the investigation much at all. It, it simply, uh, it, it, we would also then simply transition in another state police agency or whatever, whoever the lead investigative uh, entity is in that, in that state. Senator, what's your message, though, to the community? I mean, they've been watching you guys chase this guy now since day 11, a lot of scrutiny coming towards your agency that you let him slip through this perimeter. What do you say to the people that are losing faith in not only the people? Oh, I don't know that people are losing faith. I will tell you that I think people realize we have given this a 100% effort. And as I said earlier, I'm proud of the effort that our people have put forth. I'll take responsibility for it. Uh, I lead this effort with them, and I'm proud to do it. I appreciate the support we've gotten from the community. I think the community recognizes that in any kind of a major operation like this, there are simply times things don't go the way you plan. That happens in investigations. It happens in manhunts. It happens in all kinds of things. I've had a long career in law enforcement. Rarely do things happen exactly as I plan. That's why if you're smart, you're planning contingencies, and you're ready to adapt to whatever happens. This is a minor setback. We'll get them. It's a matter of time. Yes, sir. Can you uh, comment on why the sister was arrested? Uh, as, uh, as was alluded to earlier, there are some uh, immigration issues. Beyond that, I, I don't have any other comment. Sorry if you already answered this, but have you interviewed and gotten in touch with the people that helped him in 2021? As I said earlier, I am aware of that information, but I'm not prepared to discuss what actions we've taken with regard to it. I don't have. No, I don't have any information about that. Any chance he's still in Phoenixville and someone drove that van up there? Wait, just one second. When he is caught, what happens to that sentence? Is there any addition tacked onto it? He can be charged, and uh, and there can be an addition put on. I can tell you that there's already a uh, a commitment that he will go directly to a state correctional facility when he is captured. And, uh, and, and we'll work through the rest of uh, what occurs at that point, depending on the circumstances. Perimeter? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I need to come back to Did anybody see him driving the white van? Or could it have been someone else? And he's in Phoenixville, somebody dips that van up there. Is that a, a realm of possibility? No, I'm confident it was him in the van. Are you yes. able to establish a perimeter now that he seems to have 
As I said earlier, uh, no, and as I said earlier, a, a, a large perimeter isn't the answer in every single uh, investigation or, or every time or at every point in an investigation. And so we established a small temporary perimeter. Uh, we're still holding that in that area while we finish that search. If it's not successful, there's no reason to hold that perimeter. Uh, I, I mentioned to you that there were a number of delays in the reporting of this to us. So, uh, you know, we would, we would look to other opportunities to further the investigation, perhaps later today, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps uh, the day after, if it still goes on that long, uh, there may be a need for another uh, significant perimeter, perimeter like we had here. And if so, we will absolutely do that and we will absolutely uh, uh, do our best to capture them at that time. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, offer any opinion on that right now. Uh, you know, I've said before, uh, there are varying degrees of confidence. I think it's fair to say eight or nine easily. Sir, so many people were at the Mushroom Festival yesterday and today, and so many people have expressed how grateful they are to law enforcement coming in, county, state, federal, to keep the community safe, which you have this weekend here in Kent the Kent Square region. For the people that live here locally, can you give us any insight into where he was hiding specifically overnight? Do we have any evidence of, of anywhere he might have slept one of these nights as the efforts have been going on since prior to Labor Day? No, there's there's really not anything I can disclose now. From Sir. Franklin to Net Mill, he seems to have gone west about 11 miles. Uh, if he was behind the wheel, as you point out, yes. he literally ran out of gas. So where, as you try to kind of make up for any ground loss, where do you think he was going if he was going west? Well, again, I think he's looking for assistance, and I think he had a reason to do that. Where would be his next stop? Not, uh, well, I, I'm not going to go any further than that, but I think that uh, that's a, a strong motivator for someone if they're looking for assistance. Quick question about, yes. the, uh, about the, the church that was asked by the Bray Road. There were people who said they saw a white van and another car pull out of you. Mm -hmm. We have investigated Bonnie Bray. It just wasn't it. I, I didn't realize that's the church if you're talking about that there. There was an incident at Bonnie Bray. So but, that was, uh, is that a... a confirmed or yes sighting, yes uh, just it didn't involve at least the aspect that i saw did not involve okay. the church was there another car involved with that of that the people that said that there was a white no. man out with another car involved no. With no no prior to him going to beansville was there any law enforcement stationed over by his sister's house before this all happened uh i'm not going to talk about uh where we have assets uh at this point but um uh, i think it's very reasonable to think that Law enforcement assets were, given the number of people we had assigned to this, very reasonable to think that there were law enforcement assets anywhere that it would have been appropriate to, uh, to do so. Yes, sir. Can you touch on um, any of the specific challenges law enforcement is going to be dealing with with Cabo potential access to vehicles? Well, I mean, certainly um, he is a very determined individual. And so um, one of the challenges that we face is if people don't heed our advice, and as we had here, a, a vehicle unlocked with keys in it, uh, that makes our job more difficult, and it makes it much easier for him to succeed in various aspects of his escape efforts. And so, uh, you know, I go back to we want to make this as difficult as possible for him. We ask for cooperation uh, in trying to do that. No, it was absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, we can strengthen it as we bring it in. It wasn't a matter of him being outside of the perimeter. He was in there. We had sightings once we had it in there and had the perimeter strengthened. It was simply a matter of uh, you, you can't guarantee 100% of the time that you can contain somebody with a, with a uh, perimeter of that size even. So there's video any... of him and audio of this interaction here that we're looking at that stills up. Yes. But you're not releasing it? Uh, not at this time, no. Does he have any to eventually? Uh, I don't know. That'll be uh, to be determined as we go forward. What we wanted to do was uh, let the public know that really the important thing here was to let the public know what his appearance is right now. And so we took some of the best stills out of that video. The rest of it is not necessarily so important. This is what matters but I asked in terms of. Why not just be fully transparent about everything that goes on? Oh, I think, we've been, I think we've been exceptionally transparent through this investigation. And at some point, perhaps I will release the video. This has been a fluid investigation. Most of the people in here probably haven't slept uh, an hour in the last 24 hours. And so my focus isn't on how can I maximize the content that I can push out. It's how do I maximize the, the content that is necessary that to 
effectively move this investigation forward, and that's what we're trying to do with these. We'll make decisions on uh, on the video. There's nothing to hide with the video. It's just it takes uh, it takes more effort and things away from the other uh, investigative steps that we're taking. And so for right now, we hurried up and got some stills ready so that we could release those. Does he have any cartel or human, tra human trafficking? Gang affiliations, or are we confident to say this is a lone fugitive? He has had gang affiliations in the past. I wouldn't speculate as to what he's got right now. This next yeah. become a possibility again, sir? Oh, we've never discounted that, uh, and not just Mexico, we've never discounted that any uh, international escape effort uh, should be, you know, shouldn't be considered. Those are always things that have been taken into account right from the very start. Again, um, when I talked about having contingency planning, uh, we're trying to make sure that that can't happen. Is it overstating it to say that you don't know where he is right now? Generally, specifically, that he's... Uh, no, do I, do I know a specific spot where he is right now? No. Do I think right. generally I have an idea where he is? Probably, but not specifically enough that I could say let's put a hard perimeter up right now. Yes. So when he's sentenced to prison, why is he not deported back to his own country? Why are we going to leave the Iranian forces put into jail here and we're going to pay for him to be there for the rest of his life? Well, ma'am, that's, that's not a, a decision that uh, I have any input or, uh, or anything else uh, about. I, I can just tell you that uh, those decisions are made as, by judges and others in the judicial system. I have still left that order stand that uh, uh, that deadly force is authorized if he is not actively surrendering. And yes. For, the, for those agencies that are under the Department of Justice, in they have their own use of force uh, rules. And what are they in that situation? Um, I would let them speak for themselves about that. No, I, I really can't offer an opinion on where he shaved. Uh, we have relied on our partners uh, uh, in, in local government, at county uh, government levels, through the emergency management folks. We're trying to do our very best, as appropriate, to get information out to each of those communities. Certainly, if we thought there was a specific threat in the Amish community, we'd, we would uh, uh, directly focus our efforts there. But we're trying to, to keep everyone as informed as is reasonable. Yes, sir. And how are you doing? You know, um, morale is good. Uh, there are up to, up, people have heard me say this uh, in the command post since the very beginning. I've done this a number of, many, many times. Um, not always to, to this size and extent, but we've done these so many times. It's a roller coaster. There are ups and downs. There always are. And all of a sudden, it'll be resolved. And there he is. The important thing is, uh, hopefully, we don't get anyone in the community hurt and we don't get any of our people hurt and we bring this to a successful conclusion. It'll happen. I just wanted one more point of clarification about the dairy farm. Uh, yes. You were saying these were still in the van. The family was inside working, but they didn't notice their van. Had no, the family wasn't inside working. They were sleeping. Uh, it was overnight. Okay. And then so they didn't notice that their van was missing until law enforcement was notified. Correct. Okay. In the early morning hours this morning. Okay. okay. All right. Again, I thank you all. Uh, we will uh, we'll let you know uh, as, as more developments occur and, uh, and we'll schedule press briefings as necessary uh, and regularly uh, in the interest of transparency. So, okay, thank you.